In this video, I'm going to show you how to bring any animation from Blender into Unity with no bones or armatures. So you can see here, I have an animation that I made in Blender playing in Unity just fine. This animation is actually using geometry nodes to be created. I also will show you how to do it with a modifier. So this will work with any modifier in Blender. Basically any way to adjust or manipulate a mesh will work using this method. And lastly, I'll also show you how to use it uh, or import it using shape keys. Uh, so to start, I first kind of have to explain how this one was made and what a blend shape is. Uh, basically a blend shape or a shape key is a way to store vertex data, basically its position. So obviously we have this new cube I just made. It has four or sorry, eight vertices, the top and the bottom. And in the vertex tab here, I can actually click, I can click plus and plus more time and it creates a key. And what this key does is it basically stores the value of each vertex. It stores its position. So if I were to create another key and it, when I go into edit mode with this key selected, if I were to move a vertex and then go back into object mode, it looks like nothing happened, but that's because this shape key, the influence of this, this key or the strength of it is zero. So if we bring this up to one, you'll see that now this vertex is where we moved it. And I basically did exactly this with this cube. It again, started as a cube. I had a key zero or key one here that is just the normal cube. At key two, I have this weird shape. At key three, I have this weird shape and so forth. And basically I just keyframed those, those uh, strength values or influence values to create this animation. So I'm gonna first take this, um, take this mesh by clicking it. I'll do file, export, FBX. I wanna make sure a selected object is selected. And this is actually in my Unity project already. I'm gonna create a new project, I'll call it tutorial and let's just call this uh, cube shape key and I guess I'll apply the transform as well so in unity I now I'm gonna click pause now I have this new folder I'm actually gonna create a new scene just do a basic scene save this tutorial call it scene Okay, so now we have a scene, now we have this cube. So one thing you'll notice is this cube in Unity has this like weird white outline. Um, when I click off of it, it disappears. That basically is the bounding box of this mesh. So as we manipulate these keys, it'll actually deform into this radius. So it, it's basically Unity just telling us the um, the potential bounds of this with the shape keys. We can kind of ignore that now, but it's nice to know these blend shapes did import. And in Blender, they're called shape keys, but in Unity, they're called blend shapes. They're, they're exactly the same thing. So we're gonna find a way to animate between each of these shape keys and loop it. Um, it's quite simple. Uh, I'm gonna first create a new C-sharp script. I'll call this blend shape loop and I'm going to drag this onto this object that we imported. So you see it's now over here. So now if I were to, let's say, go to Google and I search Unity blend shapes, the first thing that pops up for me is working with blend shapes in Unity, the manual. I'm going to click this and we're actually going to have some code that we can copy and paste to get started. So I'm going to open up, this is our new script and I'm going to go back to this. Okay. So we want a skin mesh renderer. So this is basically what um, Unity calls a mesh that has blend shapes. And we're also going to want a, the mesh here, the skin mesh. And I realized I put this in the wrong spot. We basically want these to be the variables. And let's see, is there anything else from here we want? 
think blend shape count will also be helpful. And we can also copy paste this, put it in here, and also set the blend shape count. And I think we can also steal some of this code. I'm gonna explain what all this code does in a minute, uh, but this will be helpful for us to at least get started. Okay, I think that's good to start. Let's go back to this script. And I'm actually gonna click this just so we can see the inspector over here while we mess with it. So skin mesh renderer, as we talked about, this is what Unity calls a mesh with blend shapes. So here we're basically just creating a variable and then we're gonna assign it. So it's basically of this object because we have the script on that object. Uh, get component skin mesh renderer. So that sets it. Then we also get the skin mesh renderer. And the skin, the reason we want that is this is actually how we uh, transform. Actually, sorry, this is actually how we get data like the blend shape count. And why do we want to know what the blend shape count is? It's because in the code, we're basically going to go 0, 1, or sorry, key, we're going to go through the keyframes. So it's going to be keyframe one, two, three, four, et cetera. Okay, so now that we have this, uh, we also, th this is basically the blend shape value. So it goes from zero to 100. And for example, if I were to set this two, which would actually be zero, one, two, so key three to 100, I'm gonna save this. And what I'm expecting to happen is for it to turn into this shape. So let's click play, see what happens. Boom, worked just like we wanted. So it's set to 100. We're not actually able to change it because it's in an update loop. So it's constantly setting this frame to 100. Okay, so now if we want to loop through each keyframe, zero, one, two, three, four, we're basically gonna have to have some sort of way to store an index. So I'm gonna do int index, and we could maybe call it, let's say play index. Uh-oh, I think I clicked the wrong key there. Play index, and we're gonna start this at zero. So every frame, we're gonna set the play index to 100. And we want to take, uh, we also want to increase the play index. So in the next frame, it's gonna do, so in this first frame, it'll do have this as zero, then because of plus plus, it'll be one, and the next frame two and so forth. But we also wanna say if play index is greater than blend shape count, I believe it's blend shape count minus one. We're gonna reset the blend, or sorry, the play index back to zero. So in this, this loop, it's gonna go from 100, 100, 100, 100. And it's gonna happen so quickly that we probably barely could see it. So the only thing we're missing here is we want to set the previous frame back to zero. So I'm going to say, if play index is greater than zero, we're going to want to set play index minus one to zero. Now this is going to work for when it gets to one, it's going to set this to zero. When it gets to two, it's going to set this to zero. The problem is when it gets back to zero, it's, uh, it's not going to set keyframe four to zero because we basically have it doing nothing. So I'm going to actually put here or play index is, let's say, I think it's blend shape. If it's equal to blend shape count, well, we can actually just say, do another line item. If play index equals zero, then we can just do this. Then we're gonna set the last one to zero. 
And I forget if it's a minus one or not here. We'll kind of just try it out with that. Okay, so we have a few issues. We can see one thing is this last keyframe is not actually setting. So what are, what are we doing wrong here? You might find out before me. If play index is greater than zero, let's actually do minus one because we're getting this array index, or sorry, uh, array out of bounds. So I actually think there was one in int over the index. There we go. Now it's working like we want. The only problem is you see it's flickering crazy fast but in Blender, we had this nice smooth animation. So how are we gonna get it to do this? Uh, one thing you want to note is in Blender, you kind of want to choose a frame rate that's relatively high. Basically, whatever you think your Unity app will run at. You could do some extra code and math so it syncs regardless of what your Blender frame rate is, but for this tutorial, we'll just keep it simple. Most apps kind of run from 60 to 120 frames a second. Let's just say 60 for now. Uh, that's what my Blender file already is in, so I don't actually have to do anything. But we want to get all these in-between frames. And again, we only have four, what is it, four or five keyframes here. So how are we going to do that? There's actually a built-in plugin for Blender. If we go into Edit, Preferences, and under Add-ons, if we type MDD, there's this uh, plugin right here. Uh, it's built in. You don't need to download anything, you, but you do need to click the checkbox here. So if I if I had that add-on activated and I click this object, and I'll do File Export MDD. This, so this is what that that add-on added. I'm gonna click Export. I'm gonna call this uh, Box Shape Key. And I'm going to click export. And I'm going to create a new collection. I'm going to call this bait. I'm going to, I'm going to actually duplicate this. And I'm going to move it into baked. And then in animation, I'm actually going to, I guess I could delete it like that by just deleting these keyframes. Uh, but we actually want it. Sorry, I actually want it to be just a normal box. So I'm actually gonna go just to frame zero and I'm gonna delete all these keyframes or these shape keys. Okay, so now we have, I'm gonna hide this. We have a static box. This box is identical to this static box, except it's not animating. So it basically has the exact same vertex data. And because of that, we're gonna be able to file import MDD and we can do the shape key thing, the shape, shape key export that we just did. And now you'll see it create all these shape keys that basically are keyframing all the in-between frames of our Blender animation. So if you're confused right now, don't worry. We're gonna also do it with a modifier and geometry nodes. So it's gonna make more sense as we do it multiple times. Uh, but basically we went from having five shape keys on this one to, whatever it is, 160 frames of shape keys in here. So it's really nice because it automates it for us. But now with our script, I'm gonna just export this again to Unity as an FBX, apply transform, select objects, kind of just replace this. And I'll go back to Unity. So now in this project, you see there's tons of shape keys. They have all these in-between frames. And our script is still on this object. So now if I click play, it plays just like in Blender. So there's one thing that's a little bit different. You'll notice this is moving quite fast right here. Uh, this is based on that frame rate thing that I was discussing. So you see by default on my machine that has a 3080, it's running at 400 frames a second. So we could add some code in our blend shape looper or yeah, blend shape loop dot CS that makes a frame rate independent. Uh, for a quick tutorial though, I'm gonna just create, or I already created the script called FPS lock. 
And it's a very, very simple script that you can find easily by Googling. It just sets application target frame rate to 60, create an empty object, and I'm gonna drag it on here. Let's just call it FPS lock. And now when we play, it should lock it to 60, and now it's playing just like we had in Blender. So again, there's no rig here, there's no armature, but we have a super dynamic animation that can just export into Unity. So I'm gonna do it two more times. So I'm gonna delete this. This was our baked version here. So now we have this modifier on this object. There, again, there's no shape keys in this one. It's just a modifier. So we're gonna do it one more time. I'm gonna take this object by just like selecting it, file, export, MDD. I'm gonna call it plain wave modifier, export MDD. I'm gonna duplicate this. I'm gonna move this to baked. So we actually have two meshes right here. I'm gonna hide this one. So this was the one with the modifier. I'm gonna delete the modifier on our baked one. So we don't need it. Mesh is identical, identical vertex count, identical vertex placement. So now I can just do file, import, MDD, plane wave modifier. And now when I click play, it works just like that. I can do file, export, FBX. And this one I'll call plane wave. Again, apply the selected object only. Then I go into Blender. I'm gonna do plane wave here. Drag the blend shape script that we wrote together onto that. And I guess I could keep this in frame too. So now we have both animations working. And the last one is, as you guessed, gonna be exactly the same. Again, this was made completely in geometry nodes. And again, I can just click on this mesh, do file, export MDD. And this one I did previous to, 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 to the tutorial. Uh, I'll just call it Geonode. And this one I'll duplicate. I'll move it to the bake section. I'll hide the actual geometry node one, delete the geometry nodes. So now we're just left with the mesh. Again, it's identical to the one we want or the one that has the geonodes on it. Import MDD, geonode. Now we play it, it works just like, or animates just like we expected. File, export, FBX, and we'll call it cube geonode. And I'm just gonna delete these so we can see it better. Cube Geonode, drag the script onto it. And if we click play, it'll work just like we expected. So this is a way to get animations without bones. I will say bones are very beneficial if you're dealing with a character or something that you are reusing over and over in Unity. Uh, bones in general are lower file sizes. So when you do an object with blend shapes, it stores those vertex positions at each frame. Therefore, it will go up in file size just a little bit if that matters to your project. But there's sometimes you just want to do a really cool animation using modifiers and there's no real way to get it to work with bones. And this is a simple way to get it into Unity. I'm going to post the project files on my Patreon. If this was helpful, please drop a like and a sub. That would mean a lot to me. And I will see you in the next one.